Well, hello and welcome everybody. And thank you for joining another episode of Goldster Real Talk. And this is where myself and other Goldster presenters will be joining together with you, our community, to have conversations about the things in life that matter. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Lee Pycroft. I'm a presenter here on the Goldster platform. I'm also a psychotherapist. And today I am joined by a woman who may be familiar to our members, and that is our Goldster nutritionist, Claudia Lefebvre. And she has been in clinical nutritionist for 16 years, or 16 years experience rather. She's a lecturer at the British College of Nutrition and the Nutritional Healing Foundation. And she is on Goldster every Wednesday and Friday. Claudia, it's not that long ago we were on li live together, is it? <laughs> Good to see you again, Lee. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, Claudia and I were on a um, menopause meetup, two and a half hour live stream on Monday, and Claudia um, added some wonderful, valuable um, information on uh, nutrition then. And here we are again talking about healthy brains and nutrition in general, and you get to know a little bit about Claudia the woman behind the classes. And so please do get involved in the comments. We love to hear from you. Any questions you have as we go, then please pop them in the comments and Claudia will do her best to answer them. So Claudia, I always start these Real Talk episodes asking the guests, what attracted you to the trade you're in now, which is nutrition? Tell us a little bit about your journey to nutrition and what, yeah, what attracted you? Well, I think you'll find with most therapists of all different kinds of variety, we usually ended up there from our own health needs to begin with. So when I was in my 20s, Lee, I was working on uh, Big Brother 2 at Channel Were 4. you? All those, yeah, all those years ago. And uh, I, I was taking the contraceptive pill. So I was, um, I was having a regular blood pressure check and my blood pressure was sky high. And it ended up with months and months of investigation. We couldn't find, we couldn't find out why. And I was on medication that was making me feel very brain foggy. And I just, it, it wasn't right. And then the twin towers fell. I was standing in the Channel 4 office, which had 60 people. Everyone had your phone, your computer, and your television. So you can imagine 60 televisions. I was standing there, saw the twin towers fall. And obviously the, the shock and the um, trauma of it all, but also, I just had this really intense feeling that I, I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Gosh, isn't that so, interesting? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I left and I, I went and did voluntary work with wild dolphins in America, in Florida. Oh, how and, amazing. Yeah, and I took, well, in, packed in my suitcase was this book called The Optimum Nutrition Bible by Patrick Holford. And I read it and I was trying to implement these changes. I said, gosh, I, I do feel better. Gosh, there really is something to this. My blood pressure started behaving itself. Um, I was able to come off the medication. I was, I was like, that's it. I'm becoming a nutritionist. Oh, my gosh. What a lovely story. So what was it you, what, when you were on Big Brother then? What, yeah. what was your, so, what, in what capacity were you there? I, I was in the stra strategy department in the interactive TV. So it was, uh, my, I was tasked with creating new revenue channels for Channel 4. So uh, when you press the red button on your remote control, you were able to evict, choose who you wanted to be evicted. <laughs> Honestly, it was, it was um, uh, yeah, I wasn't in the right place. It wasn't, you know, I knew this was not part of my life's journey. I wanted to get out there helping people, making a difference. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Isn't it? it comes back to that, whether what we're doing is in alignment with our values, you mm -hmm. know, and when it's not, it can feel quite jarring, you yes. know. Um, and it sounds like from what you're saying, it wasn't really in alignment with your values. Press no. the red button. <laughs> yeah, press, exactly, escape. And, uh, and I'm very grateful to the blood pressure because it brought me here. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of silver linings, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so you got into nutrition. So how long did it take you to qualify as a nutritionist? How long well, I hadn't been? done chemistry or biology A levels. I'd gone down the. I'd start, I'd had a masters in languages um, oh, from St Andrews. Yeah, so I'd gone down a completely oh, wow. different path. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to go back, and I had to go back and do science foundation and A level equivalents, and it took four and a half years. Um, and I was working at the same time. So I was studying three days a week and working four days a week. And I, I decided to get a job related to nutrition to 
accelerate my career, you know, just because I was so interested, I wanted to be doing it day to day. So I, I worked with a health promotion company, which yeah. meant the day I got my license to practice, I called up all my clients, Unilever, Bedfordshire Police Force, MBNA, Coots, you know, loads of clients. And, and, and they were like, great, we'll book you in. And there I was. <laughs> Oh, that, that now fun. that is business minded though yeah. that is really business minded isn't it you yeah. had a you had a map there that you you know, mm. plan and you you made that happen fantastic and so so your integration into the world of being a nutritionist because you had all those contacts from your former career sort of helped you know Absolutely. really develop it speed it up really how fascinating because at the time lee in, i mean nutrition you know there are many nutritionists now but at the time it was quite an unusual thing to be yes. studying there weren't very many and it was not very highly regarded by the medical community. It didn't have the respect that it has now. Yes, yeah, yeah. And do you find that, that as you've progressed over the, you know, over a decade and a half, that people, the public are much more aware of nutrition and what, how food heals the body and what it can do for you? Do, do you find the sort of Absolutely. The clients you see now have much more awareness than they perhaps did when you first started? Definitely. People are more educated and generally as a whole, people are more interested. When, when I started out, I would say probably one in three people had an interest in health. Gosh, really? Yeah. And, and now it's and, and also the younger generation are so in, in, interested and engaged in health in a way that we weren't when we were yes. younger. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I remember growing up and you did when we, we never thought about food, really, other than it was just, just something you did. I mean, we never thought about what was in anything. So they would say sort of eat your veg potatoes and that was always the same three things potatoes peas and probably carrots do you know what i mean and occasionally you'd bear it with spinach <laughs> but um you know it wasn't like the 30 veg on a on a plate no all. no and and again like 16 years ago people would come to me but they would come because they'd just been diagnosed with a condition or yeah. they wanted to lose weight whereas now people come because they just want to improve their diet generally yeah yeah yeah. And so how do you normally work with clients then? How, what's your sort of process? What happens when someone goes to see you? Well, it depends. So either it's on Zoom or it's I work in a private medical clinic in Gibraltar mm. as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, we, we start off with an initial one hour consultation and then we can do half hour follow ups. But really, my whole goal is to empower you to become your very best nutritionist. It's not, I don't That's want to see nice. a lot of you. I don't, I don't want yeah. to see you, you yeah. know, every week. I, it, it, I'm giving you the tools for you to, to crack on and, and I'm here whenever you need. That's, that's the approach I take. It's just such a lovely, healthy philosophy. I think I almost, um, when I was doing a lot of psychotherapy, I would always take that. I don't, I don't, you know, I obviously work with people at their pace, but I want to provide solutions so they can go and sort their, their, their challenges out. You know what I mean? Not, not sort of stay with me for, you know, endlessly. Mm. Um, but that's, I think it really empowers people, doesn't it? To be, mm. um, to have the, the, the tools and protocols they need to live a life that works for them, you know, in, in right. food and, you know, emotional sort of toolkit, all of that. Um, oh, you've got a lovely comment here. Carol's just saying, I've improved my health by following all the teaching Aww. Claudia did. Um, I love all Claudia's classes, can't miss it. Um, Claudia's classes are the ones I always feel the need to see. She, her advice Aww. is amazing. You've got quite a fan club here. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, I know. Thank you, everyone. Claudia, Claudia's classes are always packed out. Um, and when I've joined them, I always come away with a wealth of information. Um, because what you, what you do is so practical. <laughs> that's the thing that's what i've always taken away it, it's not sort of a, a whole load of other things i've got to think about I think oh, how am i going to fit this into my life which already sometimes feels busy do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um what are the sort of things that come up most for people do you think as we progress through time i mean things like gut health which must impact healthy brains the of brain course. gut access obviously so yeah. so what are the sort of what are your recommendations around sort of gut health and sort of healthy brains and how we can help ourselves through time? And does our gut health change as we get older? And what's the way to sort of keep it optimal? Okay, so Lee, we, I'm just going to try and be succinct here because that's a huge question. Um, but I'm our Break gut it down flora, for us. Break it gut, down, yeah. Yeah, our gut flora decline, our digestive enzymes can reduce as well. And then, of course, many people take antiacids. Again, that can further yes. um, 
you know interrupt our ability to to digest and the, the thing is we is we it's not we are what we eat it's we are what we can assimilate so it's yes, making yes. sure we're keeping that assimilation path going and, and as effective and as efficient as possible yes yes so, and so so if someone wasn't absorbing or assimilating what they were eating how would they know what would be happening uh, well, they, they could have um, issues with their stools. So, yeah. for, for example, uh, if someone's not assimilating fats very well, yeah. they're going to have floaters, floating stools. Right, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. I've gone straight there, Lee. No, no, it's good. It's good because uh, these are some conversations we need to have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if someone's not breaking down or digesting uh, carbohydrates, they're going to attract lots of fermentative bacteria. Ferment so that creates lots of gas and bloating. Um, sorry, sorry again, Lee. Loud, non-smelling kind of farts. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you said the F word. <laughs> we, uh, we love it. We're going all in here. Yeah, we're yes. going all in. Uh, yeah. And if someone's not breaking down their protein very well, then they they're more likely to attract the putrefactive bacteria, which create the sort of silent but deadly variety. <laughs> okay. Or there are all flatulence library going on here. Yes. <laughs> I have no idea about. And often there's a combination of the two. But you know, all of these are clues and pointers. And and sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes even there's partially undigested food in the stool. Um, you know, I'm not talking about sweet sweet corn or beetroot, but you know, um, other food that would normally be broken down. Uh, there can be evidence in the stool. So that's so, another so sign. So sweet corn and beetroot, are they not digested well then? No, that... they're not. They're not. And actually, th that's great for us because uh, then I use it as a tool for measuring our transit time. Because again, that's very interesting. How long does food take from one end to the other? It's a good indicator. And so you have a large amount of, you know, little saucer full of um, beet you know, beetroot or sweet corn and you, you watch for the evidence. How interesting. So, yeah. So you would eat them and then see how long it takes for yes, them to be passed exactly, through. Exactly. And if it's super quick, then there's something yes. potentially wrong with the assimilation factor and depending on how you feel afterwards and on the, on the sort of flatulent scale. <laughs> That's right. It's so amazing, actually. It's yeah. so practical, isn't it? So practical. We're going to be talking all about this actually on Friday because I'm going to be talking about managing constipation. So this oh, is right. a, this is That's very helpful. Very helpful to know this. And if you want to know more, come on Friday. Yes, yeah, yeah. And we offer five free classes. So if you're not a member yet, you can um, join by five free classes and go and and find out about that um, that scale. Uh, Carol Saint Claude, you do make us have a good laugh um, on the flatulent scale. That's so interesting. So if someone found they were sort of not absorbing, so they would then do what? They would. What well, it depends what it is. So if it's carbohydrates, so a lot of the carbohydrate digestion begins in the mouth with our amylase digestive enzymes. So we'd focus on the chewing. You know, maybe uh, maybe their teeth are hurting or they're not able to chew their food in the same way as they did before. And that's why it's developed. So chewing properly or breaking the food down. So instead of having chickpeas, have hummus, you know, you know that kind of lentils mashed up, that, you know, softer foods might make a difference. Um, if you're not breaking down your protein very well, then it suggests maybe your stomach acid, um, you know, it could do with a little bit of support. Okay, and you do that with? Uh, we, there are a couple of ways to do it, but always seek medical advice. Yes. Um, but you could ask your doctor about taking digestive enzymes or having a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Oh, apple cider vinegar. Okay, before a meal. Just before a meal, yeah. Okay. Um, and is that that would be other particular types you would look out for of apple because I've heard that's quite good before meals anyway or is that it's really meal? good it's really good uh, yes it's you, the best apple cider vinegar is with something called the mother like the mother. The, like the father but the mother yeah. oh right yeah. what what's what is it about that one then it's it's got fermented it's got the fermented so is that a brand then the mother no no no, no. just it's it will just... stay on the label with the mother. Oh, I see. Really? That's, <laughs> you are a mine of information. I'm always like, what's that mean? What's that mean? Um, so, t so, so when, when your um, gut is functioning properly, the impact on your cognition 
Mm-hmm. Tell us a bit more about about, about that. So a lot of well, a lot of serotonin is made in the gut. So if the, this gut brain axis is absolutely huge. And there's a massive connection. But there are certain foods that we can be eating that really do help support our cognition. And uh, it was quite fun because can I share the list? Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> because um, oh, a few months ago we were we were talking about this on nutrition focus, and what we did was we combined it with with a memory exercise. And then about six weeks later, I asked everyone, does anyone remember what they were? And they'd all typed them out in the chat. Every, this is really stuck. So here's what to do. If you've got, if you've got a friend, um, you meet them for a cup of tea and they say, oh, do you know, I'm just not remembering things in the same way I used to. Remember these 10 foods I'm gonna tell you and tell them to get out their pen and here's their shopping list because these foods all really help. Okay. okay. So imagine we've got avocados balancing on our heads <laughs> blueberries shooting out of our eyes. <laughs> Avocados on our head, blueberries out of our eyes, okay. <laughs> Broccoli right up the nose, the stem right up the nose. You've got to make it visual. You've got to almost feel it, smell it. Eggs <laughs> coming out of our ears, the ease. Eggs coming out of our ears. ears. Okay. And then imagine you've done a bit of a coconut oil, oil pulling. So you've got a bit of coconut oil in your mouth. Mm-hmm. That's very, mm-hmm. very helpful. Mm-hmm. And then we've got walnut in our throat, and you pull out the walnut. You look, the walnut even looks like a brain, doesn't it? It's got to be good for the brain. It even looks like one. So here we are. We've got the walnut here, and then Lee, we've got a beautiful necklace of sardines oh. and mackerel. But uh, a very smelly one. <laughs> a very smelly one. But if you're vegan, please adapt. Make it nuts and seeds. Uh, yeah, so lots of them. <laughs> beautiful necklace here. And then we've got massive green shoulder pads, like enormous green shoulder pads with kale and spinach oh, and romaine. Beautiful. Lettuce. And you just like turn here, you just smell the freshness of it. Oh, so fresh. Mm, mm. <laughs> and then you move down to your elbow. Okay, this is a sensory experience here. It is a sensory experience. <laughs> working our way through the body parts. That's right. Is so anyone joining in? <laughs> hope so. Otherwise, we're going to feel the idiots. Um, but here we've got some lovely dark chocolate. Oh, nice. Yeah, very, very nice dark chocolate. I can't and reach then... it. <laughs> it's like torture. And then finally, we've got our fingers in the turmeric. 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 That's so lovely. It's like that game Memory Palace where you go around the palace. And you yes. go to different rooms and you put these different things in the room to remember it. And so you did this on the class and lots of people remembered. Yeah, I, I literally, I'd left it about six weeks. I said, right, whoever remembers in the exact order, I'll give you a free consultation. And, and, and they, they, did. they got it. Someone got it. Exactly correct. Exactly. Amazing. And, and, and the so reason, you, and the yeah, reason she'd, she'd help, it helped her remember it was because she remembered it. And she asked her granddaughter to draw a picture of it, all these different fruits um, coming out of the body. And it was on the fridge. Isn't that, that lovely? That is so clever. I love that. So it was avocados on our head, blueberries coming out of our eyes, eggs coming out of our ears. Um, broccoli up our nose, um, coconut oil in our mouth, walnuts in our throat. Um, then there was um, kale of shoulder pads. Ne- yeah, ne- necklace. The necklace of sardines. <laughs> and then there was chocolate on our elbow, dark chocolate. And then there was um, oh, turmeric in the fingers. Oh, well, yes. I did it. <laughs> that is amazing. And would you, would you always use things like fresh turmeric? And what no, does turmeric you, do? Turmeric is, is um, an amazing anti-inflammatory. But no, you don't always have to use fresh turmeric. It's, it's actually very strong if you're using it in a lot of cooking. Um, I would say buy powdered turmeric from a health store, though. You want to okay. get a good quality one. Yeah. Um, so from, yeah. from a health store. But actually, in terms of antioxidants and protecting the brain, yes. there's one that's even more important than turmeric, and that's lutein, which is found in kale and spinach and all, you know, our shoulder pad area here, the romaine lettuce. It's also in egg yolk, 
pistachios, bell peppers, you know, it's, it's quite random. But actually it's highly concentrated in the back of the retina. And maybe people who, anyone watching who knows anything about macular degeneration, they may have already have heard of it because it's so famous for helping with the eyes and the retina. But because it's so concentrated in the back of the eyes, it's also highly concentrated in, in the brain. Uh, and, and very, very important for protecting all our beautiful fat that we have in our brain. Because remember, we were like 60 to 70% of the brain is fat, which is why we need to eat the good fats. And then we need to protect that fat with all our dark green leafy veg. Oh, so how does that work then? I've never, I've never heard of that. That's so, so, I mean, avocados obviously very, is, is a good fat. I mean, I adore avocados. Yes. I could eat them for days. I put them into, I do that... Um, avocado mousse and I put sort of oh, cacao lovely. powder in and a bit of you know dates and I blend it all together and it's just the most delicious thing um so so how does that work then so you've got your fats that are protected the, the fats that are very protective um, and they keep the cell membranes lovely and fluid you see if we if we're not getting enough of the good fats then the cell membranes can harden and that can really hamper the cell to cell communication, communication. within the brain so, um, it, and, and also they naturally are anti-inflammatory as well. So it, it is. And do they degrade as we go through time naturally? Not if you've got the antioxidants. Not if you've got the antioxidants. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we want to, we want to keep those going. And the oily, you know, just to say, sorry, with the omega-3s, yeah, no, so it's the oily fish like salmon, sardines, mackerel, um, pilchards, tuna, there are yes. quite a few oily fish there, but also then the nuts, the seeds, the linseeds, linseeds and flax seeds, the same thing, avocados. Yes, yeah. And would you be looking to have them every day? In your diet? Yeah. Uh, um, the flax seeds and nuts and seeds definitely every day. And mm. then oily fish two or three times a week. Two or three times a week. And that would be, again, we're talking about the computer mouse sort of portion or palm of your hand portion. Palm of your hand portion. Palm of your hand portion. I love this where Claudia does the computer mouse version and then, <laughs> and then yeah. the, the palm of the hand version, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm just checking for any um, questions here. Someone was just saying um, cider. So they goes, we're talking cider vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> what cider you get down the pub? Where do you get mother cider vinegar? Oh, a health store. Health store. Okay. Have you got a favourite health store? No, just no. just a health store. Yeah. Okay. You can probably buy it online as well, can't you? Yeah. I mean, my favourite online health store is iHerb.com. iHerb. That's right. Because you you also spoke to me. I remember about the isopropyl vitamin C that you can mm. get from iHerb, mm. can't you? Which is really good um, and less pricey than something like Zuki. And mm. um, Carol's just saying we can't forget the necklace, famous sardines. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I, I do, I do get get a bit excited about the sardines just because they've got the little bones, Lee, and that is so helpful for the calcium. So not only are you getting the good fats, you're getting the calcium. Yes, 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 exactly. So we'd be looking at that three times a week, and then the other things throughout the um, the ten types of food, we're looking to have those sort of as much as we can throughout the week. Yes, yeah. as much as we can. And, and another really important thing for cognition is to try and keep blood sugar levels stable. Uh, so we want, to, we want to, you know, not have too much sugar in our diets. So when you say too much sugar, because this is where I think there can be some confusion, certainly in my own head. So there's sugar like, you know, Tate and Lyle, right? And, and Samura Gray always says, sugar's lovely, but only if you never open the packet. <laughs> 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 but then supposing there's a date oh that's okay so i'm talking about the processed refined sugars like your tate and lyle um you know what what i tend to do is do 10 days to reset your taste buds so come off all of it yeah. um, and have fruit with your breakfast and then go on to the sweet vegetables like sweet potato carrots beetroot for 10 days and then after that, you can bring in dates or coconut sugar because they're actually giving you minerals and there are some nutrients in there as well. Okay. Um, okay. And just, just but reset. It's difficult to switch from the Tate and Lyle if, if you're used to lots of biscuits and things. Mm. And then just to go to the dates, I would say stop, reset the taste buds, and then you'll really appreciate the dates. 
Do you know, it's so true because I sort of stopped having refined sugars and things, um, maybe because they made my skin itch. Like I started coming up in hives. My skin was just so itchy. And I thought I need to sort of figure this out. So I stopped having all this sort of Tate and Lyle and sugary things. But now a date, for example, a medjool date tastes like caramelized toffee to me. Yeah. I mean, it's the most delicious thing. And I've stuffed it with peanut butter or cashew butter and put it in the fridge. It's the most delicious treat. That, that's so amazing. Yummy. That's exactly what I do, except I put, in the, I put it in the freezer. So it turns into oh, like a caramel magnum ice cream. Oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. That's such a good idea. I love that. Um, have you got any other favorite recipe kind of snacky tips that you think are great for brain health or just great for health in general that you, that you uh, well, I, you know, it's not, like it's not one a, you just gave me? Yeah, it's, a, it's not a snack, it's a drink, but a turmeric oh, yeah. latte is very, very comforting. It's very anti-inflammatory. It's a really good health tonic. So what you do is you warm up a quarter of a cup of milk, so coconut milk, almond milk, oat milk, or you know whatever milk milk you like, yeah. and then you have ground turmeric, ground ginger, ground cinnamon, and you put you know a quarter of a teaspoon of each. And you give it a really good stir, and then you could put a little bit of honey if you wanted, uh, if it you know if you needed that. Um, so with honey, is there a difference between certain honeys? Yes. Uh, well, my, the medicine, the high, the, you know, the, the queen of the honeys is, is, of course, Manuka honey, but that's not to go in your drinks or on your toast. That is, that is just medicine to uh, have you know, a teaspoon if you've got heartburn or if you've got a sore throat or if you're fighting um, some sort of virus or cold. It's very, very helpful, but please don't use it in, as part of food because it's, it's too expensive for that. And, and so if you were, say, coming down with, because it's actually sort of cold season now as well, mm. if you felt yourself coming down with a sore throat or a cold, how much of that Manuka honey would you take? <laughs> to start to walk, you know, be of impact. Ah, okay. Well, I would just, personally, I would just take a teaspoon every four or five hours. Oh, so it's quite potent. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Actually, Can I you... remember, yeah, go on. No, no, you go. So, say, my son cut his arm. And he went to uh, the hospital and they used Manuka honey, medical Manuka honey, wow. to, put, to clean it, which she said was very unusual but because he, had been, uh, he hadn't been treated properly and this nurse was really upset and he hadn't been treated properly first time round. She started putting this Manuka honey on it. She did, we don't use this for everybody because it's so expensive. Um, and she treated this open wound with Manuka honey, wow. which I thought was fascinating, medical Manuka honey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fascinating. Um, so has anyone else got any wonderful um, questions for Claudia? Anything else, Claudia, you'd love to leave people with that would help them um, towards, you know, better brain health, just general tips, um, any other snacks, anything like that? So just keeping the blood sugar balance. So always including some protein every time you eat, staying hydra hydrated. Dehydration can really affect our ability to concentrate. Um, mm. in getting involved in the Golds to Sleep programs mm. um, massively affects e everything, everything. I, have a, I work with a 19-year-old who's a type 1 diabetic. And mm. what we've discovered is that if he has a bad night's sleep, the next day he needs 22% 20, 22 more insulin the next day. Gosh. after after a bad night so yeah. it, it really you know everything interacts with everything nutrition's a really really valuable part of the puzzle but it's one of the pieces and this is what i love about working with goldster and collaborating with with yes. you and with everybody else is that you know you get you get the bigger picture here it feels like yes yeah yeah 100 percent. and um actually we have a giveaway on the goldster facebook page which is, drum roll, a one-to-one 30-minute -one consultation with our gorgeous Claudia and a Mighty Green Muscle Balm, which Claudia has created, a wonderful range called Mighty Green. Um, do you want to say a little bit about Mighty Green, actually, while we're here? Because I think it's such a lovely it's just, range. Again, it's just come from a passion to try and make a difference. And I, it's from working with clients and understanding what really works and what doesn't and, and creating products to help people. That's, that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, and in, in the range is a muscle balm and a moisturizer. Muscle and balm, moisturizer, there's a, a sleep kit, there's, a, yeah, all 
CBD drops as well. There's lots of different things. Yes, yeah, so I remember someone on our, on our last live was saying they'd been taking the CBD drops for their knee um, and found it incredibly helpful. And I've used the moisturiser, which was absolutely beautiful, very calming, easily absorbed. It's got oh. polyglutamic acid in it. And beta-glucans. Beta-glucans, beta-glucans. So it's highly, it's been incredibly hydrating if you have dry skin. Um, so definitely one to look out for. Uh, just seeing if any more questions coming in. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Um, so Claudia's advice to take Manuka honey definitely helps my hubby's reflux. Um, Tracy's asking here by protein, can you explain a bit more what is a good protein? Yeah, sure. So there are different kinds of protein. So ob the obvious ones are kind of like the chicken, the fish, the meat, uh, and obviously we're we're talking about the good ones, so we're talking more white meat, we're not veering towards the red meat so much. Uh, and then, of course, you've got nuts and seeds, you've got tofu, tempeh, um, uh, lentils, all the legumes, chickpeas, beans, avocado contains some protein as well. Um, all the, as I said, the nuts and seeds, so you've got nut butters as well. So if you're having a, a snack, you know, having a little oat cake with some nut butter is a very, very good snack. Or having some hummus with some vegetables, again, that's also a good snack. So with, with sort of like a piece of fish or a piece of, you know, organic chicken or whatever, um, would you, is it easier to access that protein? Is it, is it easier for your body to metabolize that protein? And do you have to take a lot more if it's, say, chickpeas or nuts or seeds? Do you, do you have to yeah. go through it, any more? It, 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 comes that, yeah, it, 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 it is different because that meat and the fish contains all of the essential amino acids. So it, it's harder for vegans because they will be getting certain amine, essential amino acids and not others. This yes. is where they say you've got to do combinations like rice and beans together create the essential, all of the essential amino acids that are needed. Yes, yes, okay. Um, does that help, Tracy? Do let us know in the comments if that helps. Uh, Carol, just saying, what do we have to do to get those prizes? Um, so what you have to do, Carol, is go to the Facebook page. You'll see it on there. It's got a big giveaway sign. And you enter in, I think the question was, um, what do you think is a food for healthy brains? Which you're going to know after this live, aren't you? <laughs> We've given a few clues away. <laughs> yes, and Tracy's just saying that's very helpful. Um, can you get ground seeds as well as nuts for those with diverticulitis? Oh, diverticulitis. Diverticulitis, yeah. Uh, you, you can get ground, ground flax seeds but, and ground seeds generally. Um, but just always check with your with your doctor that that's going to be the right thing for you. Because with diverticulitis, you have to be careful of the bigger seeds, like tomato seeds, for example. They can really get caught in and trigger inflammation. So just please do check with your doctor that they're, they're happy for you to have ground seeds. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Claudia, you've been a mine of information as always. <laughs> it's always a pleasure chatting to you, Lee. Oh, and... Uh, Carol, you're an absolute pleasure. No, no problem at all. Lovely to see you. Um, and thank you for your time. And thank you, everyone else, for joining another episode of Goals to Real Talk. And I hope you found it helpful. And if you watch this at a later date, then please comment below. And uh, you can ask any questions, and we will endeavor to come back to you. Um, and um, we wish you a lovely rest of the day. And thanks so much again, mm -hmm. Claudia. You're so welcome. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye.